I'm Stephanie Biggerstaff. I'm the IVF coordinator here at Piedmont Reproductive, and I'm going to be working with you very closely during your IVF cycle. I'm here with you every step of the way. If you have any questions, any concerns, if you feel overwhelmed, if you need clarification of anything, just call or email me. I'm, I'm here to help you along the way to try to make this process as smooth as possible. So what we're going to do today is I was just going to talk to you a little bit about what to expect during your upcoming cycle and what's going to happen with your appointments and how often you're going to be coming in for monitoring. Um, at this point, you should already be on birth control pills. The birth control pill pack, as most of you know, uh, the birth control pill pack should have active pills and then some what we call either sugar pills or placebo pills. The most important thing for you right now is to remember to just be on the active birth control pills. Those are the ones that contain hormones. Uh, we don't want you taking any of the sugar pills right now because we're trying to delay you having a period until we're ready to get started with the hormones. So in your pill pack, the first three weeks of pills are the the hormone pills, we want you to just continue taking those um, every day at the same time every day until you're told otherwise by us. And we'll give you a specific date later of when you can stop taking those. Um, don't take any of the sugar pills, the ones that don't contain any hormones, because if you do, that'll make you have a period and we're not quite ready for that yet. It is normal, although to mention that some some women, actually a lot of women, have some breakthrough bleeding or spotting while they're on the birth control pill, so that's no reason for concern. If that happens, just continue to take your birth control pill every day until we're giving you a date specifically a little bit later of when to stop that. Um, after this, we're basically, if you haven't already, we're going to want you to call into the office and, and speak with me or one of the other nurses about setting up kind of the second part of your orientation. And what that's going to entail is you're going to come in and receive a protocol that looks similar to this, and we're going to go over with you all the specific dates of your cycle. And on this sheet, you're going to receive the dates about when you can come off the birth control pills and when all of your monitoring visits are going to need to be set up. You're going to receive a list of medications that you're going to be taking and we're going to go over all those medications with you and let you know what days you need to be taking what what meds. Um, there are different types of protocols out there and your physician has set up your IVF protocol specific to you and that's based on your age, your hormone levels, uh, your previous response to treatment in the past and so they're gathering all that information and, and deciding what protocol they want you to, what medications they want you to take to hopefully get you a very good response throughout this process. Um, we'll go over that specifically specifically with you when you come in and we'll go over all the information on the sheet and kind of explain the medications in a little bit more detail. But basically what, what you need to know right now is that in doing an IVF cycle, we're going to be monitoring you very closely during the time that you're taking the medications and we're going to need to see you quite often in the office for monitoring visits. Every time you come in to see us, we're going to do blood work and ultrasound each time you come in. Um, we do ask that all those appointments be scheduled in the morning. The earlier morning uh, appointments are better because we do perform most of those blood tests in our office and we need to get same day results to be able to know what next step you need to take and what dosage of medications you need to take that night. So we're going to ask that all of your appointments be set up for in the morning. Um, the frequency of how often you'll be coming to see us varies a little bit just based on the, your body's response to the medicine, but in general, most women need to be seen in the office roughly every two to three days during the process that they're on the medications. So we'll have to see you pretty frequently. Um, you'll come and see us a lot. We'll become family to you, and you know, you'll just become really close with us during this process because we're going to be monitoring so often, but that's just the best way for the doctors to know how you're responding to the medication. Um, as we go throughout the process, we're, we're going to be calling you at the end of every day after each one of your appointments and giving you information about what medications to take that night and when to return back to the office. Every, everybody's, every woman's body is a little bit different in the amount of medication that they take. Some women take roughly 10 days of medication. Some women may take 12 days of medication. And so that varies for each person. Um, it's not a race to see how fast you get to the egg retrieval date. It's just a matter of trying to get some good steady growth and some good quality eggs from you. So however long that process takes, as long as you're cons you know, still responding to the medication, then we're gonna keep going until we know the best time to do the egg retrieval. On the sheet that you're gonna be given, we'll have an estimated retrieval date and that may 
have already been mentioned to you prior to now about when we expect your egg retrieval to take place. But just keep in mind that that is an estimated date of your egg retrieval and that we won't know for sure what day your egg retrieval will happen until probably about two days beforehand. So there is a lot of flexibility on your part that needs to take place um, just to know that we're going to do this procedure for you when it's the best time for your body. You'll come in and have anesthesia for that procedure. Basically, uh, the egg retrieval involves essentially a vaginal ultrasound for you with a needle guide on the end of it. Uh, we do put you to sleep for the procedure. You'll receive some IV sedation here in the office. We'll bring you back and, and get you changed. The anesthesia team will be here to start an IV for you. You'll be given some IV fluids and medication through your IV line to help you drift off to sleep so that the procedure can be painless um, and as easy as possible. The procedure is fairly quick. It only takes about 20 minutes or so. Um, and as soon as we're done and the anesthesia team stops giving you the medication through your IV, you'll wake up shortly after the procedure's done and recover here on site in our own recovery room. Um, the recovery period takes about 45 minutes to an hour, just depending on you and how long it takes you to kind of wake up from the anesthesia. Most of our patients do perfectly fine. Um, there's very little, if any, nausea afterwards and very little, if any, pain afterwards. It is normal to experience some cramping at the time of your egg retrieval. You know, at, as you're waking up and, and some the remainder of the day, those shouldn't be any worse than just some normal menstrual cri type cramps for you. Uh, we usually don't send patients home with any type of pain medication for the egg retrieval because it is so well tolerated. We just advise you to take some Tylenol at home and if you do need something stronger then please give the office a call. So for the egg retrieval day when you're here and we, we do the procedure, you get put to sleep for the procedure with anesthesia, wake up in recovery room, um, recover for about 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll be able to tell you also that day how many eggs we were able to retrieve. Um, the following day, the morning after the egg retrieval, you'll, you should get a phone call from Heather, who's our embryologist, and she'll give you a phone call and, and update you and let you know how many of the eggs that were retrieved were mature eggs and how many of those eggs fertilized with the sperm. And so that's kind of like your starting number of embryos that we're going to be working with. And then from there, we try to determine when's the best time to do the embryo transfer. Uh, most women have their embryo transfer three to five days after egg retrieval. The exact date of the embryo transfer just depends on the quality and the number of embryos. If it, this is best case scenario for everybody, we would you know, ideally want to do a day five transfer for every patient that comes through the door just because we feel like here at Preg that day five embryos are considered blastocyst embryos. They're more developed, they're more expanded, and they do have a tendency to make for better pregnancy rates. Um, however, some of our patients have to have or need day three embryos just based on the quality in the stage that their embryos are at. Um, if, if a woman has a somewhat lower number of embryos at the beginning, you know, at the time of fertilization, then we don't want to risk anything happening to the, the lower number of embryos that she has in the lab and, and risk losing any of those. And so we feel like transferring them sooner rather than later is the best scenario for that patient. So we don't want anybody to get discouraged and feel like if you have a day three transfer that it's not gonna be successful for you. It just means that we're doing what's best for, for you and your embryos and hoping to get a good pregnancy outcome from this. Um, on the day of the egg retrieval, and, and again, you'll be notified approximately two days before the retrieval as to what day the procedure will take place. The day that we do your egg retrieval, you and your husband, assuming you're using your husband or your partner's sperm, uh, you'll be given a specific time to arrive at the office. We'll have you come to the back and get you ready for your procedure. Your husband will just wait in the waiting room until the lab is ready for him uh, to collect his part because he'll need to collect a fresh specimen that day as well to fertilize the eggs. And then once we have you back in recovery, uh, then he can come back there and sit with you if you would like until you're ready to be discharged home. Um, I always tell people to keep in mind, you know, we're going to give you a specific date on your sheet about when we're estimating egg retrieval to take place. It's important that your husband or partner have a certain number of days of abstinence at the time of the egg retrieval uh, for his collection. So it's, it's our recommendation that you plan for roughly three days of abstinence on the day of your estimated day of egg retrieval. So if, if he has three days of abstinence for that day, then he's covered whether or not your retrieval goes a couple of days beforehand or a couple of days after we plan because it can all fall within a few days window and that way we don't have to worry about um, him having too little or too many days of abstinence at the time of his collection. 
So after egg retrieval, like I, like I mentioned, we'll be able to tell you how many eggs you got. You'll get the phone call from the embryologist about fertilization results, and then we'll plan the best time of embryo transfer. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please contact me or one of the other nurses in the office to schedule kind of, we would say, part two of your IVF orientation. And again, that's where you'll come in and meet with one of us personally. We'll sit down and go over your individual protocol with your specific dates for your cycle. You'll then be notified exactly when you can stop the birth control pills and when all the other hormones will begin. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about all the injections and the medications that are going to be involved for your cycle. And please feel free to call me. Um, let me know if you ever have any questions along the way because we're here for you throughout this process and want to make this, again, just as easy as it can be.